Hi everyone, we're glad to have you back with us at Somerset Place as we discuss the fourth and final room in the Juba and Sarah Martin home. Eight people occupied this space in 1843, including two single adults, John Iredell and Urias. John was forcibly sent to Alabama later that year after being inherited by Louisa Collins. While Urias had been sent from Edenton to Somerset Place in 1839, when Henrietta Collins hired him out to her brother Josiah III. Urias was a shoemaker valued at $700, and nine years later he married Celia in the Lake Chapel. They and their children were listed with a C following their names, but the meaning of the C is not known. Unfortunately, they were not included on any other record from Somerset Place, nor on Henrietta Collins's list of enslaved people prepared during the Civil War, so their fate is unknown. Also living with John and Urias were Henry Cabarrus, age 31, his wife Maisie Bennett, age 27, and their four children, 11-year-old Nellie, 8-year-old Mahala, 5-year-old James Limit, and 3-year-old Cora Ann. They later had four more children after this inventory was compiled in 1843, although Cora Ann is presumed to have died later that year. Henry was born in Edenton and sent to Somerset Place around 1819, while Maisie was the daughter of Stephen and Eve Bennett. As we mentioned in our first video about the Martin home, her sister Caroline lived in the other second floor room of this house. During the Civil War, Henry and Maisie remained at Somerset, but their five living children and grandchildren were taken to Franklin County. While there, in 1864, Mary Collins sold Nellie for an unspecified reason, and she does not appear again on any known records. However, most of the family reunited at Somerset Place the following year. Henry passed away after 1880, but Maisie lived into the early 20th century with her son James Limit, who had married Augusta Anna Gustana Carter. Together they had 10 children. By the 1890s, the couple owned a piece of land up the road near Cherry, which was large enough not only for his immediate family to live on, but also his siblings and his elderly mother, Maisie. James had worked as a carpenter under slavery, an important trade which he marketed to his advantage in freedom. In addition to carpentry and farming, he also worked on as a day laborer for other nearby farmers, so Gastana and their children often tended to their fields. The area where they lived is still referred to by locals as Gustown after Gastana. As we move forward with this video series, we'll be looking at the smaller slave dwellings on the 1843 list of families. To learn more about the lives of the enslaved community, check out our other videos linked here. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bells for notifications of our latest uploads. And until next time, thanks for tuning in.